Hi everybody, I'm Ken Jones. I've had my FT5 now for a couple weeks. Um, after a successful initial build, I ran into a lot of the same issues that um, some other folks on the Facebook site were having, especially around the heated bed. Being able to get the bed hot, to be able to keep the heat up enough to be able to print ABS with good adhesion. And so I started looking at ways to insulate the bed, looking at other videos, and found a really nice video by Shane Fuga on um, how to enclose the machine for relatively cheap. And so I went out, bought all the stuff, put it all together, and it worked great. It kept the heat in, I was able to print ABS, and I really, really was liking the simplicity of the build and the fact that it used inexpensive materials. And that lasted about three or four days until I realized that once you get that enclosure on, the only way I could access the machine now was from the front. So anything I had to do in the back with the ZN stop or the electronics or anything, I had to either take the machine back apart, the frame back apart, or I had to really destroy pieces of my enclosure. And so I started thinking I wanted to be able to have an enclosure that was relatively inexpensive to build. Mine ended up being a little bit more expensive than uh, Shane's, but I wanted it to be relatively inexpensive, easy to do, not require a whole lot of tools. I didn't want to be screwing into the aluminum all the time or need tools to take it on and off. And I wanted to be able to take advantage of the nicety of this being an open uh, machine. I mean, the fact that it's on these aluminum, uh, 2020 aluminum, it makes it really nice and open. So if you're printing PLA or something like that where you don't need an enclosure, I really like it to be open like this. I can put cameras on it, I can get around the backside. And so um, when I was watching Shane's video, I saw there's a part where he's uh, putting on the side and he says, maybe I'll do something here with magnets. Well, I do a lot of cosplay work, uh, building things with, uh, for cosplay, and I use magnets a lot. So I thought, well, maybe I can come up with something for magnets. So I started designing pieces to be able to build my own enclosure. Let me show you some of the pieces. I'm going to put these parts on Thingiverse for everyone. So if you want to try this, you're welcome to. Uh, the first thing I built was a set of hinges. And so this part of the hinge actually snaps right into the the 2020 aluminum and this piece wedges onto either a piece of foam core a I'm using corrugated plastic you could use acrylic or plexiglass anything that's about a quarter inch or seven millimeters and that gives you the ability to hang a piece of board off of uh, the front back side whatever the machine and you can have a um, you can have a, a door and I've also got a, a door handle on there I'll show you later and then to be able to hold the panel on, I came up with these magnetic things. The ones that are actually on there now, the part that's on the 2020 is two magnets deep. But you can see the way these work is they have these little trays, and inside the tray are these neo magnets that you can get from Michaels or other craft stores. So you just put the magnet in the tray, you snap this part onto the 2020, you put this onto the piece of foam core or plastic or whatever you're using and now you've got a way to uh, to keep that on now I, I recommend uh, once you get it all set up and everything the way you want it put a little dab of CA glue or something uh, in here to keep you know keep these little drawers from popping all over the place I also made some windows that you just you just cut a hole in the foam core or plastic and slide that in and that's for where the uh, where the the USB cable goes in or where the power cable goes in so let me show you how the enclosure goes together and then I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the issues that I've had uh, building this tinkering with it and prototyping so really the only thing that even takes a little bit of time are the hinges And these are set up so that you don't really have to take these off. This is the doorknob I was telling you about. It works just like the other um, magnet parts. It just has a door handle rather than being flat. And that's it. Now you've got a machine that's enclosed, 
It has a door that opens in the front. It has a door that opens in the back. So even with the enclosure on, it's still relatively open. You can get wherever you need. And if you just have to get somewhere that the doors won't let you, you can just pop a side off. I do want to put another hole up here uh, with like a sliding door or something so I can get to the Z end stop. You can still use the frame if you want to put a spool holder or something like that in. You just make a cutout in the, uh, in the plastic and stick your accessory on there. Let me show you some of the issues. I've worked really hard to make sure that these parts weren't just something that exists in a software program that I created and that they wouldn't actually work in the real world. Um, this is probably about the fourth or fifth version. Uh, I went with the double, the double thick magnets on the frame because I just wasn't getting, I wasn't getting adhesion enough to hold up a heavy piece of plastic like this with just one magnet. But you'll notice that if you look at the side door here, you can see that it doesn't have a seal all the way around. It's pretty open. And I have tested it like this. It does hold in heat, but not as well as when you've got a, a good seal all the way around. So what I've done is I put weather stripping on the frame and then weather stripping on the panel part that I want it to maintain a good seal. And I only had enough weather stripping to do the top and the door, the front door. But you can see once that's, once it's on there like that, you can close it right up. It keeps a nice, good, tight seal all the way around. You don't even need anything closed up on the bottom. Um, so the, the seal is one thing you'll have to overcome. Any accessories that you want to use, you'll have to overcome that by cutting holes. The only other thing I would tell you is that the, these, these parts here, these brackets that go on that snap right onto the 2020 are very, very difficult to get on the frame. Um, unless you're just really, really strong in the hands, you're not going to be able to put this on with your hands by yourself. Uh, what I've found is the best way to do it for me is before I go to put it on, I pry the, the ends, um, these ends here, I pry these apart as much as I can with pliers. Now, I've played with probably 40 or 50 of these, putting them on and off the machine. I've only ever broken one, and it, it broke while I was using the pliers on it. So you, you pry them apart as far as you can with the pliers, with a little bit of pressure. And then what I did is when I, when I got it seated on one side, I tapped the other side with a mallet and it would just snap right on. They're, they're pretty beefy. Um, these are out of PLA. They're, they're probably not going to break on you. I mean, again, I've whacked these things with a mallet. I've pressed them. I've pried them apart with pliers and they still haven't broken. Um, so that's it. I'm, again, I'm going to put these parts up on Thingiverse. My name is Ken Jones. You can find me on there. They'll be listed under uh, magnetic enclosure for the FT5 or something like that. Um, again, thanks a lot for uh, the inspiration for this from, from Shane. His video was really good. I, I, I really like his enclosure. I've just tried to um, make it fit a different set of needs. So I'm looking forward to some feedback. Um, thanks a lot, and I hope this helps somebody. Please let me know what you think. Bye.